Hello folks, my name is Kendra from Kendra Van Druff Watercolors. Today we are going to paint the Northern Lights from Denali National Park in Alaska. This is such a bucket list thing for me to see someday. I cannot wait to see these in person. But for now, painting them will do. It'll be so much fun. We're going to go over watercolor wet and wet technique and pine trees and stars and it's going to just be such a fun time. So. Without further ado, let's get painting. Alrighty, we are going to go ahead and get started on our Northern Lights Galaxy Pine Tree artwork capturing Denali National Parks northern lights so to start I like to use a sponge brush to apply a watercolor wash on the entirety of my watercolor paper something to note with watercolor paper is that it's super absorbent and so it is 140 pound weight and it can definitely handle being fully saturated with water um, something that I really like to do is make sure that I tape down with painter's tape my paper when I do a water heavy artwork like this. Um, that way the artwork doesn't warp too, too much. But here we go, just adding water to the entirety of the page. Just going left to right. Okay, our page is nice and saturated. If it does dry a bit, we can always re-add water as we go. So I am going to use a 12 round Princeton brush. I'm using the line that's called Aqua Elite. I will link it in the description below. And we're gonna go ahead and start throwing on color onto our galaxy. You may feel it's a little bit fast moving, the reason is we really want to utilize some wet into wet technique. Um, that's a huge technique in watercolor where you apply color um, next to each other and you allow it to bleed and blend. And so that's a huge technique with this painting that we're going to touch on. So I want to start with our lighter colors first. I mixed just a hair of olive green with a bunch of Windsor and Newton yellow, cadmium yellow. And I'm going to start towards the bottom of my page here. This here is just a hair bit too yellow, so to help counteract that, I'm going to add a little bit of cobalt turquoise light to this color just to make it slightly more green. Bam! Love it. That is exactly what I want. So the northern lights are quite whimsical and wavy. They are just stunning. That's definitely on my bucket list to visit. Um, but I'm just using this color here and just doing almost like a snake wave or an S curve. If you're scared of snakes, just an S curve is all good. Well, there we go. So there's one. Then I might do just a snippet of another indication of some northern lights over here. Again, kind of following that kind of subtle S curve, like so. Okay, so while we're still here, I want to add some pops of cobalt turquoise light. It's my favorite color in the Winsor Newton palette. It's just gorgeous. It's like this vivid aqua. I just love it. So I just want to add just a few touches of this color. along 
the edge just a bit. The northern lights are kind of either really nice vivid gold lime green or turquoise. I've seen some purple in photos before too so they are quite vivid and striking. You can tell this corner has already dried on me so I'm going to add some water here just to continue with the wet and wet technique. Just adding some touches alongside the S curve here. Aha, uh -huh, in this corner, also got dry on me a bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply with my sponge brush some water. There we go. This area is a little bit white for me, so you can go ahead and add a little bit of yellow to your cobalt tur turquoise light. Turquoise is not easy to say all. I just want to say like tortoise or something. <laughs> but go ahead and add that. Maybe just a pop here and there. Add just a bit more. So this is kind of our northern lights kind of motion here that we've got. There's a lot of movement curving upwards. So now I'm going to go ahead and make sure to resaturate the page, especially along the edges of the S curves with some water. Continuing with our wet and wet technique. There we go. Awesome. So the next color I want to use is called Prussian Blue. And this is also in the Windsor Newton palette. And in fact, all of my colors are in the Windsor Newton palette. I love that watercolor brand. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start to work with some of our darker colors now. I started with our lightest colors first, and we are working our way into our darker shades. This color palette is poppin'. Okay, I'm just kind of reapplying it because I want it to kind of be darker and have a sharper contrast compared to the lighter colors that we just applied. You can see the colors already blooming on the white areas there, and it's just so pretty and fun to watch that. It's almost like a tie-dye situation. I don't know about you, but I'm always down for a tie-dye situation. <laughs> Alrighty, so I'm just kind of continuing to add Prussian blue in these white areas here and I kind of want to separate these two kind of northern light waves so I'm going to add it in between them as well kind of following that silhouette sil silhouette silhouette of our S curve okay so before I go too far I want to add back in some more cobalt, turquoise, tortoise light in here just to help kind of soften the contrast of the Prussian blue and the lime green. Love this color, it's just so pretty. just really allowing that turquoise to kind of bloom into the lime green a bit more. Okay, so after we've layered the cobalt turquoise, we're going to start adding our highest contrast colors or our darkest colors that are going to add a lot of contrast. So I'm going to start working with some Payne's Gray and I'm going to kind of allow that to just bleed into the Prussian Blue and fill the outer edge areas. Mm 
Okay, so I'm just gonna add some more Prussian blue. This kind of painting requires quite a bit of layering and fiddling a bit. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and add just some more along these edges here. Slightly lighter than the um, paint's gray. So it's gonna kind of help ease in the contrast a little bit. Okay, finally, last little bit of some more cobalt turquoise light. So we are definitely layering it up. And just love the, the richness and vibrancy of this color. And you can tell how saturated the paper is with water. If any areas of color are not quite bleeding or blending like you want them to, just add more water to those areas and that'll kind of help them bleed quite a bit. Really love this soft blend right here. It's kind of what you are aiming for. Alrighty, so that is the painting portion of the night sky and we are going to go ahead and let this dry for a few minutes, maybe about 10 minutes or so. So you can even do the touch test to see when it's dry. After this is dry, we are going to go over some pine trees. All right, so our watercolor galaxy has fully dried and now we get to start adding some pine trees. So, here we go. We are just going to use some black, and I'm using my size 4 Princeton round. So I've switched gears a bit to a smaller brush just to be able to add some finer detail here. And what I want to do is add a few lines, and these are going to indicate our... Um, trunks here. I kind of like to get a layout of the trees and have them be at different heights and variants of height, which means the same thing. <laughs> so anywho, I have one tall big guy right here. I'm going to do one that's kind of small, medium size next to it. And I'm going to do one slightly small there. Just playing around with the different heights. The more variety, the better. So just getting kind of the layout here. not to be totally perfect we're gonna layer a lot of branches and bristles on these guys okay so to start out with our pine trees after I get the line work of the trunks laid out I'm going to start from the very tippy top of the pine tree and I'm going to start out by adding some very dainty, kind of almost eyelash lines on the top here. And as I work my way down, I'm just going to widen my brush strokes. I like to do almost like upside down V brush strokes. As you can see here, I'm just kind of fanning out these wispy kind of V shapes they're kind of flat so imagine upside down V and someone sat on it and that is what we're going for now following the silhouette of almost a cone shape where it's quite narrow towards the top and wider towards the bottom I am widening my brush strokes quite a bit as I go down lower towards the trunk. 
And again, this is just the first initial stage. And I start with really light pressure towards the top. Very dainty, delicate. See the width of how thin this is compared to the bottom? It's quite an exaggeration. So following that cone silhouette all the way down. So now I'm going to go ahead and layer on top of these kind of V brush strokes. I'm going to add just a few light kind of wispy dashes along the bottoms and the tops of the branches here. Almost like these little branches here are full of eyelashes. So just using my brush to add some lines on the tops and on the bottom and I'm layering and overlapping quite a bit so that way the tree is pretty dense and full of branches and pine needles. Alrighty folks, so we have wrapped up our pine trees and layered tons of branches and pine needles. Um, and now they're really popping against the contrast of the night sky. The next step I want to do while these guys are drying is add our stars in our Northern Lights galaxy above. So I tend to like to use some chalkboard markers for my stars. I feel like I have a little bit more control with them. Um, they've got a nice point to them. I am using the Lana and Luca Fine Art Supplies brand for my chalkboard marker. The tip is nice and pointy. <laughs> I could get the cap off. Um, so it just gives me some more control. Another option is using white acrylic paint or white gouache paint if you have it on hand. So any of those three will work totally fine. Okay. So to add the stars, I want to just use really light pressure with my hand. And one of the things I try to make sure to do is not add polka dots to my sky, meaning I don't want them all to be evenly dispersed. I want some clusters. So here I'm just going to do a cluster of a few right here. And then from there, I want to add maybe a few just far off and more spaced out, totally at random. So the more random the stars are, the better and the more realistic it'll look. We don't want a perfectly symmetrical polka dot pattern. We want, you know, some trios maybe of stars like that and a few nice clusters of stars. So the more random, the better. Add some here closer to the tree. I'm going to go ahead and make sure I get a good amount of coverage of stars going on. That's going to become a big star. <laughs> Okay, so what I would like to do is add a shooting star in here. So I like to pick a darker area of the artwork so that way the contrast of the white star really pops. And all you do is do a crooked dash line. That is it. Um, and so that's just a simple 
little shooting star right there. Don't overdo it with the stars because otherwise it's really going to take away from the vibrancy of the sky, but it really does make the painting really come together. Now what I'm going to do is let the pine trees continue to dry and after they've dried I'm going to show you guys a satisfying tape peeling of the artwork. I love peeling back the tape. It's like one of the odd satisfying things to watercolor painting that I could watch all the time. My most favorite part, so satisfying to do a peel off of the painter's tape on the final painting. So let's check this out. Alrighty, so I try to make sure my painting is dry and I just gently peel the tape. Oh yeah. So this paper size here is a standard frame size of 9 by 12 but I tape it down to be about 8 by 10. The reason for that is because if I want to, I can keep it 9 by 12 and it's still frameable. Um, or if um, I decided to, I can cut it to 8 by 10 and it's still a standard frame size, so either or is totally fine. Oh, nothing quite like a satisfying tape peel off. Alrighty y'all, this is the final artwork. I love how it turned out. The Northern Lights are just so, so pretty and I just love how Denali National Park in Alaska is just full of gorgeous Northern Lights. I cannot wait to see those in person someday. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Definitely like and subscribe so you don't miss further tutorial tu tutorials tutorials in the future. Um, so thank you so much for painting with me and happy painting. P.S. If you thought that was the end of the video, just kidding. Something I wanted to give y'all a little exclusive sneak peek on is coming this winter, I want to teach y'all how to do a watercolor galaxy on a tree wood slice. I am obsessed with wood slice painting. Like, so in love with it and I cannot wait to show you how to paint your very own just like this. So this will be in the winter season so definitely stay tuned and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the release of this video. I actually taught an in-person workshop um, on this just this past Wednesday um, and I'll definitely make sure to do an in-person workshop as well on this but my husband Eric over here he joined me for it and this is his and it was so much fun. He had never painted before. You can hop in here. You can come on down. Don't be shy. <laughs> so he had never painted with watercolor before and he literally got in such a creative flow state and was so into it. It was so much fun. I just had a blast. So definitely stay tuned for that. All right, y'all. Happy painting. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.